Welcome to Tech Talks, our platform edition. Today is focused on getting Zoom data into Splunk. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars focused on features and best practices within use cases. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these tips and tricks, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. During the course of this presentation, we may make forward-looking statements regarding future events or plans of the company. Any information about our roadmap outlines our general product direction and is subject to change at any time. Without notice, it is for informational purposes only. Please do not make any trades based off this information. My name is Dante Backus. I also want to introduce my colleague, Manan Grover. We are both solution engineers and we're excited to share with you information about getting Zoom data within Splunk. Our CTO, Tim Tully, recently published a blog regarding our Remote Work Insights application on Splunkface. This is our new solution to the new work from home reality. Our goal with this application is to help customers monitor their systems with data already available from the enterprise. I'll be sure to touch on this more later. With that in mind, today we are gonna talk about the importance of monitoring video conferencing tools such as Zoom, getting started with Splunk, what's required to leverage the video conferencing dashboard in the RWI application. We will then go through a demonstration of setting up the data input for Zoom in your Splunk instance today. And then we will cover additional resources available to help you take advantage of service monitoring capabilities in Splunk. Lastly, I want to add that our team will be available for Q&A throughout this presentation over the Q&A feature. And if you watch a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Splunk community website for any follow-up questions. The sole purpose of the RWI application is to monitor systems, not employees. With a large portion of the workforce moving to remote work, we are starting to see customers get a fast start with Splunk Cloud leveraging the data that already exists in their environment. What does this mean? Well, from an IT perspective, it is important to ensure that employees have access to the various services needed to conduct daily business. Monitoring video conferencing tools such as Zoom can help answer some of these business critical questions, like is our remote workforce connected? Are they able to stay productive and run business? Are they engaging with each other? Before we move on to the demonstration, I want to go over some items. Step one, I want to ensure that you have installed the Remote Work Insights application from Splunkbase. Next, I want to ensure that you have installed the Splunk Connect for Zoom add-on from Splunkbase. Now, I do want to highlight the difference between an app and an add-on. An add-on is meant to assist bringing data in. An application is meant to help you leverage that data with pre-built reports and dashboards. Assuming that these steps are completed, you will then be able to start setting up the data input in Splunk. Now, keep in mind, in this demonstration, we are going to be using port 4443, which is open in our Splunk environment for the Zoom application to push events to. Whatever port you choose to utilize, please ensure that that is open on your firewall to allow the Zoom traffic through. We will then walk through setting up a Zoom application from the admin console, which is essentially a webhook that will push new events to your Splunk instance as they happen. Now, I'll let Manan walk through the demonstration and we'll finish off with a brief tour of the RWI dashboard. Thanks, Dante. Let's dive into our demo and I'm gonna start by performing a preliminary step that is to create a new index. And you can choose to go with the default index, but the benefit of creating a new index is twofold. A, better access management, and B, log retention. So let's create our new index, um, navigate to settings and go to indexes. Hit new index, and I'm gonna call my index Zoom. Uh, you don't need to make any other uh, changes. I'm gonna go with the default index size. Uh, you can change it based on your requirements. Hit save, and you should see your new index created here. Download the Splunk Connect for Zoom add-on from splunkbase.splunk.com, which is our app repository. Now, this add-on will help you ingest your Zoom data better 
within Splunk. Um, so go ahead and click install and it'll accept the license agreement here and agree to download. This will start downloading on your uh, host machine or your system. Um, once the download completes, we're going to navigate back to our Splunk instance and install this app here. So click manage apps and click install app from file. And I'm going to choose the file that just downloaded on my system, which is this .tgz file. Upload and your app is ready for installation. If you perform the steps correctly, you should see the Splunk Connect for Zoom within your list of apps. We're now going to create a new data input within Splunk to tell it what kind of data we're ingesting. So navigate to settings and hit data inputs. Because of the add-on that we just installed, you're going to see a new local input type called JWT webhook, which is what we're using to ingest the Zoom data. So click add new. And once you're on this page, we're going to enter these fields. So give it a name. I'm going to name it Zoom. Notice that we are using port 4443. Um, this is the port that we're using to communicate Zoom with Splunk. You can use this port or any other port. Um, notice that this add-on comes pre-packaged with the SSL certificate file and the private key. So you don't have to worry about it. Let it be as it is and hit more settings. Now this is where we're going to change the source type and the index. Click manual and I'm going to give it a name zoom webhook and select the index as zoom once done click next now our modeler input is ready and the configuration settings at the splunk end are done the last and the final step is to create an app within the zoom developer website which is marketplace.zoom.us so navigate to this website. Note, for this demo, I'm using my own personal Zoom account to get the data within Splunk. So the data which comes into Splunk will be my Zoom meetings or my recordings. But you should be able to use your Zoom admin account in order to see your entire organization's data. So once you're on this website, log in and hit develop and click build app. We're going to create a webhook only app. So hit create and give it an app name. Enter the basic information for your app. Company name would be Splunk. And given your developer name, I'm going to enter my name here. Hit continue. Here we're going to add the event subscriptions. These are the different events that you want to send to Splunk. So toggle this bar and add new event subscription. Give a subscription name and I'm going to stick to Splunk. Now, this is the most important step where it wants you to send, give the endpoint URL. So this will be the URL of your Splunk instance. So I'm going to navigate back to my Splunk instance and copy the instance name. And once you have the endpoint URL, Remember that you have to add the port that we used, 4443. And also use HTTPS because we want to send in our Zoom data to Splunk more securely. Now add the event types. Hit add. And on the left side, you see the different event types. On the right side, you can start selecting whatever events you want to see within Splunk. So I'm going to select a few here, and I'm going to select a few relating to webinar a few relating to recordings, and then some relating to the user. Once you've selected event types of your interest, hit done. Click on save and hit continue. Now your app is activated on the Zoom account. Now that we've successfully set up configurations on the Splunk end and on the Zoom side, it's time to go ahead and see if we're receiving data within Splunk. So I went ahead and already created a new Zoom meeting, so I should see that data within Splunk. And sure it is. I'm um, getting two event types right now, which is relating to the meeting that I just started. So I'm getting meeting started and the meeting ended event here. Thank you for that, Manan.
Now I'll give a brief tour of the RWI dashboard. I'm going to switch back to the demo environment. You'll quickly see those same two events that Manon showed a few seconds ago. If I drill down into one of these events, I want you to notice the field extractions that Splunk was able to perform at search time as Zoom events came in through Webhook. These field extractions will serve as immediate value leveraging the apps that I referenced in the beginning of this presentation. Now, if I go to the Remote Work Insights Executive Dashboard, specifically on the Video Conferencing tab, you'll see I'm populating some of the dashboards. Now, I'm not populating everything because this is a personal account, but what I will do is switch to my other demo environment. Now, this would represent a larger organization. Assuming that you're bringing in data from an admin account, we can now see that employees within this environment are able to access a service needed to conduct business. We also have another application on Splunk Face called the Splunk App for Zoom. This is all serving as a purpose to help IT professionals ensure services are up and running. Here are resources that align with our talk today. You will receive links in an email after this presentation. As I mentioned before, rather you are joining us live today or watching this at a later date, please continue the conversation with us on our Splunk community website. Sign up or sign into answers.splunk.com and look for the discussion with the COVID-19 tag. After this presentation, we are going to send you a specific link with the COVID-19 response, is Splunk able to ingest logs from Zoom? We really appreciate you taking time out of your schedules today to join us. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We are excited to share the series with you. We'll be here for an additional two minutes to answer any remaining questions.